Hello children, welcome to your social studies class. In today's session, we'll be revising whatever we have studied so far in geography. For years, people have been looking at the sky, marveling at the form and thinking about how it came into being. From the earliest times, astronomers have been observing the movement and characteristics of celestial bodies. At that time, one could see the stars only with the naked eye. Over the years, astronomy and technology have made immense progress. The invention of the telescope made it possible for the mysteries of the sky to be explored further. Today, astronomers do not even need to use a telescope to look at the sky. They use computers that can collect enormous amount of data about a universe. So students, let's try to unreveal some of the mysteries of our universe, know more about the planets and find out why our Earth is unique. Therefore, the topics that we will be revising in today's session are as follows. Number one, Introduction to Universe Number 2 Stars and Constellations Number 3 Sun and Solar System And Number 4 Introduction to Planets So let's get started The Universe is where everyone and everything that exists from very big to very small. It is the whole of all forms of matter and energy and it includes the sun, the planets, the stars, the galaxies, dust clouds, etc. There are multiple theories on the origin of the universe but the most widely accepted one is the Big Bang Theory. As per the theory, about 13 billion years ago, an explosion happened and the entire universe came out from a single point in which the total matter in space was initially concentrated. Due to this explosion, the matter flew in all the possible directions through space, leading to the formation of the sun, the moon, the stars and many many more objects which are now called as celestial bodies or heavenly bodies. The clusters or group of these celestial bodies, stars along with dust particles make a galaxy. Several millions of galaxy makes up the universe. The galaxy to which our solar system belongs is called Milky Way Galaxy or Akash Ganga. The branch of science that deals with the study of heavenly bodies like stars, planets, comets, etc. is called astronomy, whereas the branch of astronomy that deals with the origin or evolution of universe is called cosmology. Some of the famous cosmologists and astronomers are as follows. Copernicus, Isaac Newton, Kepler, Galileo, Stephen Hawking. The person who is specially trained to travel into outer space is called an astronaut. Some of the famous astronauts are Neil Armstrong, Aldrin Edwin, Sunita Williams, Kalpana Chawla. Let's quickly summarize what we have learned so far. The universe is the whole of all forms of matter and energy, including the sun, the planets, the stars, the galaxies, etc. Second, there are multiple theories on the origin of the universe, but the most accepted one is the Big Bang Theory. Any natural object 
which is located outside the earth's atmosphere such as sun moon stars planets etc are called celestial bodies or heavenly bodies number 4 cluster or groups of celestial bodies stars along with dust particles make a galaxy number 5 several millions of galaxy makes up the universe sixth the galaxy to which our solar system belongs is called milky way galaxy or akash ganga number 7 the branch of science that deals with the study of heavenly bodies like stars planets comets etc is called astronomy whereas the branch of astronomy that deals with the origin or evolution of universe is called cosmology hello students welcome to the second part of our geography class chapter the universe i hope now you have got some understanding about our universe from the first part of the chapter let us now begin our session on one of the major component of universe that is stars and constellations when you look up at the night sky you will notice that it is full of tiny shining objects some of them seem to be twinkling some are bright while others are dim not all the objects can be seen through our naked eye the sun the moon and all the other objects shining in the night sky are known as heavenly bodies or celestial bodies some of the celestial bodies are very big and hot they are composed of gases and have their own heat and light these are called to be stars each star is a huge dense mass of hot and burning gases these emit heat and light in large amounts therefore they are called self luminous objects as they emit light on their own the sun is also a star in the sky the other stars look so small as compared to the sun because they are very far away from us whereas sun looks bigger and brighter because it is nearer to the earth than the other stars proxima centauri is the second nearest star to the earth after the sun in ancient time navigators used to determine direction with the help of pole star it is the brightest star that remains in same position in the sky in the sky you may have also noticed various patterns formed by different groups of stars these are called constellation one of the easily recognizable constellation is ursa major also known as small bear or saptarishi where sapta means seven rishi means sages the constellation ursa major the great bear is visible in the northern hemisphere all year long another famous constellation you can find in the sky is orion also known as hunter let's quickly summarize what we have studied so far number 1 stars are huge celestial bodies made up of hot and burning gases they are luminous objects as they emit light on their own second sun is a star it looks bigger and brighter because it is nearer to the earth as compared to the other stars number 3 proxima centauri is the second nearest star to the earth after the sun number 4 Pole star is the brightest star which remains in the same position in the sky. Number 5, a group of stars forming a recognizable shape is called a constellation. Number 6, some of the famous constellations are Ursa Major, also known as Great Bear or Saptarishi, Orion, also known as the Hunter. from the past two session we understood that sun is a star so let's begin our third session in which we will learn about sun and its family that is the solar system so let's begin solar system is a group of planets and other celestial bodies that revolve around the sun 
In fact, the word solar comes from a Latin word sol, which means the sun. Hence, the term solar system is the family of sun consisting of sun at the center, eight planets which move around it, along with their satellites, other celestial bodies like meteors, comets, asteroids, etc. The sun is the most important part of the solar system. It is around 4.6 billion years old. The sun is a huge mass made up of intensely hot burning gases, mainly hydrogen and helium, which gives out tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat and light and it has a surface temperature of about 6000 degrees Celsius. The sun does look small from the earth as it is millions of kilometers away. The distance being so huge, it cannot be expressed in kilometers. Therefore, astronomers have come up with a better unit to measure such large distances and that is light year. Light year is the distance travelled by light in one year. It is equal to 9.46 into 10 raised to power 12 km. The sunlight takes around 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach the surface of the earth. It is the heat and light of the sun that makes life possible on earth. In ancient time, people started worshipping sun as Lord Surya. They considered it as the only visible form of God that can be seen every day. According to Hindu mythology, Surya is the supreme god of light and energy and the literal source of life. The Rig Veda is the oldest Hindu writing having a collection of numerous hymns and songs in praise of sun god or Surya. So students, let's quickly summarize what we have studied in today's session. Number one, the solar system is a group of planets and other celestial bodies that revolve around the sun. Number two, the sun is the most important part of the solar system. Number three, it is a huge mass made up of hydrogen and helium, which gives out tremendous amount of energy in the form of heat and light. Number four, light year is a unit of distance traveled by light in one year. Number fifth, the sunlight takes around 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach the surface of the earth. Number six, according to Hindu mythology, the sun or Lord Surya is the supreme god of light and energy and the literal source of life. In today's session, I'll give you a brief introduction about what planets are. A planet is a celestial body that moves around the sun. The term planet is derived from the Greek word planetai, meaning wanderer. These planets don't have their own light. They only reflect the sunlight that falls on them. Hence, they are termed to be non-luminous objects. Planets have two types of movement. One is rotation and the other is revolution. Each planet has its own axis on which it rotates or spins. All planets rotate in an anti-clockwise direction that is from west to east except for Venus and Uranus. This is known as period of rotation. On the other hand, planets also revolve around the sun in unfixed elliptical paths known as its orbit. This is known as period of revolution. Each planets take a different amount of time because they are at different position from the sun. Farther the planet, the more time it takes to complete one revolution. Our solar system has eight planets. In order of the increasing distance from the sun, the planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. These eight planets are divided into two categories. Terrestrial planets or inner planets and Jovian planets or outer planets. Number one, terrestrial planets or inner planets include Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These terrestrial planets are made up of rocky material. Their surfaces are solid. They don't have any ring system. They have very few moons and they're relatively small. 
the other four planets that is Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune are categorized as Jovian planets or outer planets. All the four Jovian planets have multiple moons, they support ring system, they have no solid surface and they are relatively huge in size. These Jovian planets are further classified into gas giants and ice giants. The gas giants include Jupiter and Saturn. They are predominantly made of helium and hydrogen, whereas the ice giants include Uranus and Neptune. They are made up of rock, ice and liquid, mixture of water, methane and ammonia. Let's quickly summarize what we have studied so far. So students, that's all for the day. The remaining portion of our chapter, we will be studying in our next session.